Hey, 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 Lee Ryan Fair here. Welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. I hope you're having an awesome day. Today, I thought I would do a Look What You Made Me Do music video explanation by a Swifty because obviously I'm a huge Swifty. I love Taylor so freaking much. I thought today I'd cover my couch with some Taylor blankets with lots of pictures of old Taylor because you know, the old Taylor is no more because she's dead. But yeah, I've got my red blanket up over there. I've got my 1989 blanket here. I've got my um, platinum all album covers here. So, you know, I've got like every uh, old Taylor on the couch with me. Oh, and I've got my ah, this pillow. You know, I'm all prepped for this, okay? All prepped. Okay, I'm gonna just put screen crap. I'm gonna put screen caps into this video of things I am gonna talk about. But I'm ready to get rid of all your rumours where you think she's shading people when she isn't. Here goes. So first off, we have Zombie Taylor, which you can see she is wearing a blue dress. But you might recognise that blue dress from the Out of the Woods music video. So this dress is, like this Zombie Taylor is meant to show that Taylor died after the 1989 era because Out of the Woods was the last music video of the 1989 era and you've seen her in that blue dress and now she's dead. You can also see on one of the gravestones is Taylor's pseudonym that she used to write, this is what you came for. That is Niels, I don't know how to pronounce this, it's Niels Soberg or something, but yeah, it's on that gravestone. So that's to show that that's dead too. And then we move on to the fact that she's burying Met Gala 2014 Taylor Swift. That dress is from the 2014 Met Gala in which was the start of the 1989 era. So the end of the 1989 era is burying the start of the 1989 era. And obviously this whole thing is about burying her old reputation because it's dead. Next one. So the next part is Taylor lying in a bath of like jewels. This part everyone thinks is about Kim, but it's totally not about Kim. So get your facts right. It's about how the media always used to say whenever Taylor breaks up, she just lies in a bathtub full of pearls and cries. That's what this scene is about. And you'll also notice the one dollar sitting in the bathtub with her, which symbolizes her sexual assault case, which she won because no one should sexually assault anyone and get away with it. It's disgusting and people shouldn't be able to do that. So Taylor stood up for all those women and even men out there who've been sexually assaulted and were too scared to stand up because sometimes the law doesn't sort things out correctly. But now people feel like they can talk up more because Taylor stood up for them. But also in this frame, you'll see that there's three watches on the floor that seem to be in like a certain like pattern, which we still don't really know what that means. And also on the left hand side, you can see a, a kind of no spell out. We're not sure about that either. But on the left hand side, you'll see there's a locket down there, which symbolizes a locket from a certain someone. If you know Taylor well, you know who got her that locket is what I'm trying to say. Next scene is the awesome snake scene, which Taylor looks great in every single scene. A hair in this scene, my gosh, it looks awesome. This scene is about how she's always called a snake and she's called the queen of snakes. So she turned herself into the queen of snakes. This scene is simple and damn right, uh, Bugger off to all the haters out there that called her a snake. She's done, she doesn't care anymore, she's embracing it. She is the queen of snakes. She is the best. You can see that the snakes are pouring the tea. And then you can also see the snakes dropping the tea. So they are spilling the tea. Yeah, serving that tea. Ooh, I nearly missed an important part of this scene as well. Um, you can see everywhere written on the banisters, written on the, uh, the arm of the chair, it says A2 Brute, which is a quote, a famous Shakespeare quote, which stands for like, and you Bruce, which is about a scene where someone 
is being like sacrificed or murdered and the guy that's been murdered's best friend is murdering him and they're like and you Bruce so it's like a betrayal so she's so this is her saying that like how she's been betrayed by everyone and how she's been betrayed by friends and stuff and she doesn't know who to trust anymore so that's an important factor in this next one is the car crash scene which is interesting in two ways you can see it in both ways and it kind of represents both things so the first thing is the idea that taylor's just been in this huge accident and no one cares at all she's she could be hurt she could be like dying and the paparazzi are just stood there taking pictures of her at her weakest which symbolizes what the media has done for so long they just show her weakest parts they don't care about her they wouldn't go and save her you know it's like quite heartbreaking to be honest that she's under this light and no one ever helps her but there's also a thing in here where it's like Loving him is like driving a new Maserati down a dead end street. And then it, she's called in the Grammy, which shows the fact when Red was nominated for Album of the Year at the Grammys and she never won Album of the Year. But she thought she did because they were like, random access memories which sounds a lot like Red and Taylor thought she'd won it and she was so excited and everyone made fun of her for so long and it broke my heart so much and I met her six days after that and I spoke to her mum about it and it was just so freaking sad like Red deserved that Grammy like full stop Red deserved album of the year Red was such an amazing album I mean if you've listened to the song all too well that is lyrical genius and oh my gosh, the album itself is just amazing. But yeah, that's what that symbolises. Two things out of that one. Two very important things. Oh, you'll also see the cheetah in the car. The cheetah's wearing the 13 necklace. Got to get the 13s in there. See, the old Taylor isn't really dead. <laughs> Next is the birdcage scene, which shows how she's trapped in this cage. And she's got all this security around her but she's still trapped. Everything that's going on, she's trapped in this cage and she's got to learn how to be happy in this cage and that's kind of what this scene shows, I think. This scene's a bit more difficult to decide what's going on, but I feel like that's the idea of what's going on. She's just trying to make her life work in this cage. The next scene is another scene that a lot of people don't understand that people really need to understand, which is Taylor robbing the bank, which is actually, if you see, on the floor on the gold plate it says stream core on the top on the led panels it says stream core so it's meant to represent taylor robbing the streaming companies like apple music and spotify after she took her music off there and she wrote the letter to apple she didn't do that for herself she wasn't robbing anyone but that's what the media said she did this for those smaller artists who can't take the music off Spotify and Apple Music because they need the money and they need the public image out there. They need their music out there. Whereas Taylor's like, I don't need that money. I don't need any of it. So I'm going to make this stand for the smaller artists out there. And she did that to support everyone. But no, the media's like, oh, she's doing this because she wants the money. She's doing this to rob them. She is the bravest woman ever, so shut up, media. Sort yourselves out. You don't have a clue. There's also another little thing in that scene, but I'm not going to point that one out. You can try and find that, which we don't really know about either. Also in this scene is Taylor holding a burning book, which symbolises her being called the mean girl and her being called Regina George and stuff like that. So I feel like that's a symbolization of the burn bug and I love it. It's so good. Next part is the girl squad. You'll see on the screen this flashing squad and there's also an animated drawing of Olivia Benson on there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get them kitties in there. But this is meant to show Taylor being the leader of a girl squad and it's like an army and you can only be in if you're like a perfect like model girl and you've got to be perfect like you can see the girls are made up of these little parts of bodies this is what the media portrayed taylor's friendship group has it wasn't at all taylor was just just had friends and they happened to be models but there was also like ed sheeran in there there was loads of like different people music artists and stuff that she was friends with ryan reynolds was part of that friendship group and it's like what the heck media oh yeah she's this person who 
has an army of models. It's just pathetic. The media is pathetic. But that's the image being portrayed in this. She is just ending everyone in this music video and it's the best thing ever she's done with all the hair. Oh, and you'll see the dumping ground for the models because it's like, oh, if you're not good enough, you'll get thrown out of the friendship group or the squad, the girl squad. And you can see that Taylor's lying there too. And you can also take this as how a lot of people were fake and a lot of fake friends that Taylor's had to leave, escape the fake friends that she can't trust anymore. I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me. Next is the room with the dancers. They all follow Taylor as she walks in. They are her peers and her assistants. And they're kind of slaves in the video. And this, if you don't know what the I Heart TS represents, that is about a certain someone who the media portrayed she was using and that he was like a slave and stuff like that and it's just so the media need to like get out they don't have a clue they were happy and the media portrayed them like this so this is what this scene is about what i think personally she played that character to the max like it's so perfect and her dancing yes her dancing scene I'm just gonna add this bit in now because it's kind of the same scene. But that's to like, everyone used to make fun of her awkward dancing, which I loved, but she brought that dancing down in this. She went all out and owned that scene. Like, damn, she's an awesome dancer. And people can't comment about it now, can they? Hmm? You'll also see bits throughout of Taylor on the wing of a jet, chopping the wing off. This is the representation of Taylor being a jet setter who jets around the world, picking up men left, right and centre, which is what the media portrays her as. And now I'm going to cut the wings off because I'm done with all that rubbish. Next is my favourite scene out of the whole thing, which is the reputation era Taylor stood at the top of the tower while all the old Taylors are climbing up to get her and trying to get to the top. The whole thing of this is all the tailors in the past were just trying to get to the top, but they were always kicked down, and you can see You Belong With Me, Taylor getting kicked by one of her magazine shoot covers boots. They were all just trying to get to the top, and they were all just getting knocked down again and again and again by the media, just being horrible, and Red was so close to getting there. But nope, this reputation era, Taylor, shows that she's strong, she's harder, she's ready to take on anyone and she's done with the world. She's at the top now, she's done, she's the top. This is the what she is now, she's done with everything else. Like, all the old Taylors are gone, this is the top now. And you'll see every, like, iconic outfit is in there somewhere. Like, there's very few that she's missed out. I mean, it's hard to see a lot of them, but they are in there, I guarantee it. Like, it's insane. And you'll also see on a Junior Jewels t-shirt are the friends that have stuck by it, the friends that are still there, the friends that she loves and cares for, the friends that love and care for her. But exciting to see that those friends are still there for her and those friends still care for her. Because, yeah, they're all trying to climb up because none of them want to be left behind. That's an important part. They didn't want to be left behind, so they were always trying harder and harder to climb to the top, and she got closer and closer, and they just got knocked down. But now she's there, she's at the top. You'll also see when she's doing, I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because she's dead. You'll see that that phone is the phone, for, well, a very similar phone to that of the Our Song music video, which is a real throwback. Our song is slammed screen doors, thinking LA tapping on your window. And you'll see the reputation Taylor now join reputation on the side of the plane, because that's meant to represent her writing reputation. Now we're at the talking bit at the end, which the first time I watched this, it broke my heart. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so sad, because it was so true. But then it's like, nope, Taylor's done. She's like, ripping herself here. She's shown the haters that she doesn't care what the heck they say because she's gonna do it to herself and show you that she's done with it. It's not happening anymore. Like, she doesn't care anymore. So you'll see shocked face Taylor, 
which we all love Shock Taylor. Taylor was legit excited about winning awards and people were all like, oh my gosh, she's so fake in it. Like she can't be shocked that many times. And it used to break my heart when people say that because she was so excited about winning. I mean, who wouldn't be that excited about winning awards? Taylor is so down to earth and she will always be excited about everything that comes to her, like breaking records and stuff. Even though like, we're like, oh, it's just another record she's broken because we know how amazing she is and we love her so much. It means a lot to her still. And of course it means a lot to us as well. So it's like, she react. I don't understand people who aren't excited by these things. Like it doesn't make sense in my head. And she's like so shocked and everyone's like, the media is just always like, oh, she's fake, she's faking it. Oh my gosh, here she goes again, fake shock face. It's just like, oh my gosh, shut up media. It was quite a while ago that that happened. And I mean, it still kind of happens to her, shocked face. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's fake. Then you've got the that bitch scene. Sorry for the language, but that is a quote from a song. And you'll all know about that song regarding a certain someone who didn't ask for permission on that line and that is a really horrible line. This is Taylor how she wasn't happy with being called that and it's like don't call me that. It's not nice. It's not good at all and they just did it and this is everyone making fun of that. They were like oh yeah she said they could do that. She said they could do that which she didn't because she didn't have a clue about that line. We'll get to that situation in a second. Next was Fearless Taylor with the sparkly guitar, Mr. Sparkly Guitar. But yeah, the Fearless Taylor being told she's a fake. Taylor was the American sweetheart. Everyone loved her except the media who started calling her fake and oh my gosh, she's just putting on a face. She can't actually be that nice, which she is the nicest person ever. Oh my gosh, she is so down to earth and nice. The media just thinks she's fake because they can't believe people that nice live in this world, which, do you know something? I can kind of understand because it's very rare you get people that nice and she is one of the nicest. And do you know something? A lot of Swifties are like that. And that's why I love this fandom so much. Then the fearless Taylor starts crying and it's like, and the one of the reputation Taylors are like, there she goes playing the victim again. Taylor released the song before the music for a music video for a reason because she knew she'd everyone would be like oh here she is playing the victim again she'd already put it in the music video and guess what everyone did that the music video came out there she goes playing the victim again and she already knew everyone was gonna say that so that's why she's like i'm done with it everyone's gonna say it no matter what i don't care anymore we all watched them say that and taylor knew they were all gonna say that and then she released the video three days later and she already knew. She doesn't play the victim at all. She writes about her real life. She writes about real things that happen rather than going online and ranting about each other like everyone else seems to do or go to the media and tell them a story that's complete rubbish. Taylor writes all the truth in a song so people can pick at, and she does it in metaphors so people can pick the metaphors however they want and make them fit their own lives rather than just being Oh my gosh, this person did this on Twitter. Taylor is so creative and smart. She took all this hate and just took it in, took it in for the past 10 years. And she just writes these songs that are amazing. She's a lyrical genius. The songs and metaphors are so amazing. And people don't get this, how amazing she is. Oh my gosh. Next part is the getting receipts. I'm gonna edit this later. We all know who this is about. We all know who released something they shouldn't have and had edited it to make Taylor look bad. Which we all know later came out as it being edited and all the news articles missed that part out. Like one or two published about how what had been published was wrong and fake and all this. But you know, no one cared about that. We all know who that's about and we all know what situation that's about. And we all know the truth now. We know 
which two people carried on things that they shouldn't have after Taylor forgave them for doing something that they shouldn't have, which brings us on to the next scene about how Taylor wanted to be left out of a situation that she shouldn't have been involved with in the first place from 2009. When a certain someone, my camera cut out, so I don't know where that cut out, but yeah, the VMAs, she's done, done with everyone. She's here for her fans and that's the only reason he she's here. She did no media promoting this single. She just released it to her fans who she knows are there for. She didn't go to the VMAs because she wanted to hang out with her fans on Tumblr. She unfollowed all everyone she followed on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. But she never unfollowed her fans on Tumblr. And that is who Taylor is. She just loves her fans so much and she's done with the drama and fake friends and all this media rubbish and the haters and she's done with it that's her done she's just here for her fans now this is just the best thing ever and i love taylor so much and she, this music video is the best video ever everything is in there and she just ends everyone that's ever hurt her or hated on her for no reason she's done it in such a smart way i can't love her anymore she is a genius so just keep re-watching that video there's always new e easter eggs you're finding in that video just keep watching it it's broke loads of records already but i had it on repeat on like 100 tabs i'm so proud of what taylor's done and i'm so happy and so excited for the reputation era go watch the video over and over over and over again make sure to pre-order reputation because you know it's gonna be immense I've got a lot of stuff out there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any ideas of other Easter eggs or anything I've missed, please leave them in the comments down below because I know I've probably missed a few things out that I already knew but I just like skipped through it quickly. Make sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe. I hope you have the best day. Bye guys.